Hey everybody, I'm back with another video, 27 centuries later, and please don't judge me, I really was busy during that time. So a few weeks ago I went out for some art supplies, and I've been really wanting to do some art with Pashka markers, for a long time actually. There is very little variety in the colors of these markers where I live, and on top of that these markers are quite expensive. I got a 25% discount on these, and each individual marker still stood at 27 Egyptian pounds. I had to be practical, and given both these restrictions, I chose very basic colors I knew I was going to use a lot, like red, orange, green and blue, and black and white of course. These two were the hardest colors to find. They sell out so fast it sometimes takes me weeks to be able to get them. And then other colors such as flesh tones are practically non-existent and I still don't know what to do about this because ordering these colors off of Amazon.com these days would be extremely expensive to have shipped to my country. I also got three watercolor pens from Miniso. I had never tried them before but I found these shades on the caps really subtle and cool. And here's the gal who's gonna be my test subject. I took this particular sketch and scanned it at a higher resolution to print on another paper since my current sketchbook pages are extremely light. They're like 70 or 80 grams at most if I remember correctly so I really don't think they can hold the Pashka markers and I don't want to tear the page while I'm working. And I also wanted to clean up the line art bit. So after I scanned the sketch and did some quick fixes in Photoshop and then printed that, I stuck it into my watercolor sketchbook with masking tape because I still wasn't sure how well that paper I printed on was going to hold. Given how very limited my color palette is, I thought about it and ultimately decided I'll go for a simplistic division between light and dark. This gal's gonna have orange fur that looks red in dimmer light. Rather than doing an elaborate shading and taking into consideration the planes of her face and everything, the idea is to try out the pens, and I do like keeping very sharp lines between light and dark areas in my more stylized drawings, especially when they're meant to be very stylized and I'm not going for a full render here. I really do want to try out these markers with more elaborate shading in the future, but if I can get a, a wider variety of colors. Okay, at first I was careful to move the pen in a circular motion like I do with water-based markers and colored pencils, but it turns out I don't actually need to do that and I love it. I'm sure it's because these markers are acrylic and not watercolor, so the opaqueness is not really leaving room for those smears that happen when you're using water-based markers, and this is really comfortable. If I can ever get my hands on flesh-colored pens, I'd be able to do actual renders of faces. I'm going a little bit over the line art in some places, but I'll fix everything once the paint's dried. I'm used to rotating my sketchbook all the time when I'm working, but I don't want to do that while I'm recording here, so I'm trying to make my wrist as flexible as possible. I only have one shade of green, which works fine given that the shade on our girl here begins near the lower half of her face anyway, so from then downwards there will be no variation in tones. As I expected, the watercolor pen isn't anything special. The color is very similar to the cap which is cool, but I can still see some smearing even though I'm trying to paint in a circular motion. I think you can tell from the changing lighting but the sun's setting fast and I'm trying to get this done as fast as possible before it gets too dark to film this. I come from work pretty late every day, but today was actually an exception and I arrived relatively early and that's why I'm trying to film this thing as soon as possible before it gets too dark. I don't have any lighting equipment, so I'm at the mercy of natural light. 
It's the best light you can film in anyway, there's no comparison. But it really restricts you because you only have so long before it gets dark. And you don't have a lot of time to make a lot of changes and mistakes. And when you're at work for almost all of daylight, yeah, your time and choices are limited. The two things I loved about these Poshka markers are how vibrant they are. My camera doesn't do them justice and the fact that they're very opaque and you don't have to worry about smear marks. Obviously water-based markers are great in their own way because they give your work a lot more texture, but I'm liking the very solid color blocks these acrylic markers give without having to paint in a circular motion. As I was finishing up, I realized I needed a soft grey to accentuate the darker side of our girl's muzzle and her right eye, so I dug up my grey watercolor marker and added in those. This is the finished sketch after scanning it into Photoshop and cleaning up some little marks here and there. I also lowered the intensity of the red and orange a little bit. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on Instagram and Tumblr since I'm more active there, and I'll leave both of their links in the description. And until next time, bye!